Thank you for joining us again on another edition of Frontier Opening Bell. And it's the very first for this week, Monday, the 25th of January, 2021. Now let's look at how the market settled last week on a weekly basis. Nigeria was negative uh, by some 0.42%. Ivory Coast was positive for the week, uh, for Friday specifically, uh, by some 36 business points. If you look at the Egyptian market, that was maintaining the uptrend, positive by some 0.48%, while Kenya experienced the weekly decline of 2.12%. Rwanda's <laughs> Book Stock Exchange was negative by some uh, 29 business points. Perhaps that's due to some profits taken. But for the headlines that we have now from the eastern part of Africa, let's look at how things were with the Central Bank of Kenya that raised some 81.05 billion Kenyan shillings from infrastructure bond sale. Kenya also seeks to uh, some fresh 500 billion shillings for pipeline construction and a host of other infrastructure developments. The United Kingdom okays some 8 billion Kenyan shillings for Kenyan government's affordable housing program. And of course, the National Social Security Fund buys new shares of Kenyan Commercial Bank. Uh, Bona International Bank nets some 440.3 million bare profits, which is a decline of 4.6%. Now let's get Ali Kansachu, uh, who is uh, the CEO of, of Front rich frontiers management in nairobi kenya to speak to this but before i get it to answer this i need to quickly do a bit of introduction we're well packed this morning we've got ali segir uh of segir associates uh, professional services in uh, dubai joining us this morning thank you for coming through onye kai joma of vetiva capital management appreciates your presence on the show this morning and of course boston amofaye executive editor at frontier africa reports thank you for joining us Ali Kansachu, CEO and founder of Rich Frontiers. Let's get you uh, to look at the stories that we have in, uh, from Kenya, uh, the bond side of things, the infrastructure financing program, and a host of other headlines there. So, good morning. Yes, um, uh, uh, that was a fairly significant chunk of change uh, that went into the infrastructure bond. What we've seen is uh, appetite for curve extensions. So there have been buyers... Uh, going further out the curve, there's been less appetite in the very short end. Uh, T-bill subscriptions have gone down as banks have extended maturities. Um, and I think this infrastructure bond tapped into that appetite for longer dated paper. And uh, that was a significant um, uh, subscription that we saw. Um, the announcement that the Kenya Pipeline Corporation is looking for 500 billion shillings, this seems to be an all-singing, all-dancing plan for a pipeline from Turkana, a refinery there as well, um, uh, improved storage facilities in Mombasa. I think for now, uh, it, you know, optically it looks like a very big call in a difficult environment. We would need to see, in my opinion, uh, a rally to about $75 to $80 in the Brent crude price for this money to be forthcoming. Um, uh, and that's the way I look at it right now. So I think the cabinet secretary was setting out his stall, um, probably encouraging uh, uh, and trying to catalyze activity. But I think this is beholden to the price of oil and um, essentially, particularly for the Takana fine, um, I think we need to see a considerably higher price before, before that pipeline gets off the ground. Dominic Rubb uh, visited Kenya last week, made a bunch of commitments. Uh, one was around low cost housing. The British obviously are much keener to uh, tie um, its allies closer to, to themselves in the post-Brexit environment. And, uh, you know, this was a significantly important visit. And uh, not only did he talk about low-cost housing, but he, he talked about giving access to vaccines, um, the University of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine as well. Though, frankly, our numbers have really tumbled and we're currently at a infection daily positivity rate of less than 3%, which is as low as I can recall going all the way back to May last year. The NSSF, which is the National Social Security Fund, um, uh, had been buying about $3 million of KCB stock. 
It's interesting um, in the context that uh, foreign investors have really divested out of Kenya Commercial Bank. And um, I think you've got to see that in, in the NSSF stepping up in the context of what they obviously believe is an egregiously underpriced share. Buna um, uh, profits down in single digits, which frankly is a good performance in the context of what we're seeing politically um, currently in Ethiopia. Thanks a great deal, Alec and Sacha, for all of these um, analysis. Boston, would you like to have a go with any of these headlines there? I mean, we know that Kenya in recent time has been enjoying massive investments from foreign portfolio investors and from within. Uh, we can hear you. Your, it looks like your audio is muted. I think the infrastructure, thank you. I think the infrastructure uh, bond sale uh, speaks well to the gap that is existing across Africa in almost every country. And I think Ali had that covered uh, 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 about 81 billion shillings. That's quite some, some pile of cash, if you ask me. And I think it speaks to the appetite of the Kenyan uh, uh, authorities to, to attract infrastructure. But don't forget that the Chinese are also still coming through. China still has a whole lot of funding gap. And the Chinese are willing to even do more uh, with uh, Kenya as far as that uh, key economic front in, in East Africa is concerned. Thank you. Right, thank you. Let's now quickly move on to the Western African markets where the Central Bank of Nigeria is. Uh, we're looking at uh, the export proceeds uh, policy uh, revision of check the books and of course the diaspora remittances, uh, which of course over the weekend they gave some policy around MPC meeting. The Monetary Policy Committee meeting of the Central Bank actually begins today in Nigeria and tomorrow we'll be getting the outcome of their meeting. Uh, we know that uh, there's also uh, the conversion of some four vessels under the Sea Link project uh, in Nigeria now to so national carriers. Exxon Mobil over the weekend also resumed uh, Kwaibo oil production as well as exports. West African Development Bank raises some 491 uh, on global dem uh, uh, domestic uh, uh, capital, no, debt capital market uh, now overbought by some six. Uh, uh, six six times uh, overbought, actually. Uh, Onyeka, I'll need you to speak to expectations around the CBN. Uh, we've seen a whole lot of policy reforms lately. The MPC meeting is holding today. That should be bringing about some consolidation and some uh, 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 expectations are really high at this point in time. Would you want to walk us through that? Um, yes, thank you very much, Tempo. Um, I think over the weekend, um, through, through last weekend, over the weekend, we saw like a raft of, you know, CBN circulars talking about um, a bunch of things. Um, we talked about the export proceeds, um, the export proceeds rule, um, where, you know, um, investors that, uh, exporters that have not been repatriating um, their, um, their um, FX proceeds, um, you know, might be back from a lot of banking services in Nigeria. And you can clearly see a theme around, you know, much of the circulars that have gone out recently. It largely been focused on FX, much, um, basically, uh, just just the way the CBN has been focused on, you know, FX FX um, policy management, you know, over the past one year, and rightly so. We are currently in an FX crisis. Um, I expect that, you know, going into this um, MPC meeting, the CBN will continue to be focused on that. Beyond that, um, we expect a hold um, policy. We expect a hold stance, you know, at the end of this MPC meeting, uh, because um, we're, we're basically just starting the year. The CBN has, um, you know, made a very bold, rather ambitious, or I, I rather wishful um, call that um, they expect us to exit this recession in Q1 2021. Um, which, you know, I don't expect to happen in 2021. Um, given their call, we expect that they would hold out to see um, whether, to see how things play out, um, at least in January and even through March. Um, and I think the only time we might see a movement in one of, their, in one of the uh, monetary policy levers is if, um, you know, we have a very weak GDP, uh, we have significant contraction in Q1 GDP, or we have a significant outperformance in GDP. But anything within the um, expected band of um, 
negative two percent to positive two percent to positive zero point five percent. Um, I don't think we'll see any significant any significant changes. Like we said last week, um, central banks around around Africa are still largely constrained on what they can do at the moment. Many of them have exhausted you know their munitions, and the CBN, for example, has to consider uh, FX policy management and. Uh, Okay, Onyeka, thank you. At some point, we were losing your audio, but it's fine. We were able to grasp a whole lot of what you said. Uh, but Bosa, let me quickly come back to you again uh, with ExxonMobil's uh, resumption of Kwaibo oil production and exports. I mean, how does this speak? to the OPEC plus uh, production limits and uh, measures that the federal government of Nigeria is expected to comply with. Your audio is muted again. We need you on. So just to make sure that I uh, reduce environmental uh, uh, noise. Thank you so much. Actually, the last uh, uh, interview that uh, the head of the NNPC, Mele Kerry, did with the Bloomberg was very optimistic, which was just about two weeks ago after the end of the OPEC meeting, which uh, was in January, was very optimistic that Nigeria will be able to ramp up on oil production. The compensation period will end by March. Nigeria is expected to fulfill those compensation this month and next, uh, sorry, February and March, and being completed compliance by March the 31st. That was what the Nigerian oil minister told the OPEC plus meeting just about three weeks ago. So we hope that this will continue. Bringing Kwaibo back on, on stream is one good news as well. Thank you. All right, great. Now let's move to the Southern African trade here. we we'll look at the diamond story. Uh, of course, diamond trade is now roaring back on uh, seated home shoppers. Demand is uh, gradually rising again, and that is impacting sales. My box South Africa is to dispose 45% interest in my box Zambia. We know that extend financial services is buying up that state. Now, Pan African six uh, months of a figure of mining company Pan Africa uh, gold production uh, rising by some five point nine percent to ninety eight thousand three hundred and eighty six ounces. Uh, ninety one uh, PLC uh, has now reported that asset under management uh, for now December the twentieth December the thirty first twenty twenty uh, stood at one hundred and twenty eight. Uh, 0.6 billion uh, pounds. And finally there, we've got uh, the Botswana diamonds now looking to raise some 363,000 pounds via 60 million, uh, 60.5 million units uh, share sales. Uh, that, of course, is expected to uh, give some buffers to exploration across um, South Africa and, of course, in Boana. Alisa, let me come to you quickly. Uh, we've got two great Alis on the show this morning, albeit with different spellings. But Alisa, I need you to weigh in on this. Uh, give us a sense of uh, your understanding of these developments across the South African markets. Uh, which one factor? Oh, any of the you? I, I, I mean, I like to, I like you to make your pick actually. Yes, I'm more we can say specialist in North Africa, but uh, no. I think uh, what's going on in uh, Southern Africa is quite interesting. You know, all this move in terms of uh, economics and all this kind of stuff are really interesting. So I don't really we can say I'm not really specialist of this. So I will uh, let other experts to talk about Southern Africa. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll save the best for the last, actually. But Ali Kansachu, let's get you to look at this development in South Africa. Diamond is rising, and of course, Botswana Diamond, Botswana Diamond is now looking to raise some 363,000 uh, pounds. I mean, how significant is this, uh, given that these are commodities, and we all, all over the years, have been seeing concerns around the boom and bust uh, cycle of commodities, generally. Okay, your audio is muted, Ali. The point, first of all, is that, uh, you know, the commodity cycle seems to have got some legs of late. We've broken out of uh, a long-term downtrend. We've seen big spikes um, in uh, the underlying commodities. Diamonds were very depressed last year, you will recall. I think people were cooped up at home and, uh, and not really prepared to uh, indulge. But we've seen a good recovery. De Beers have repriced 
the diamond price is higher, which is always a positive signal and signal strength. So I think uh, what we're seeing is diamonds riding the coattails of this commodity rebound and also um, people now uh, be more prepared to, to spend uh, discretionary money. So it's a very positive step. I think it's positive for Botswana. And then, therefore, that's why we saw that uh, capital raising exercise out of Botswana. So overall, the picture certainly has brightened uh, for the diamond business. And I, I think that bodes well for Botswana uh, in the second half of this year. Okay, you, you, know, you know, Ali, we also have MyBox South Africa buying or selling 45% of its stake in MyBox Zambia. Any particular uh, uh, reason for this move? No, I, I mean, I was looking into that. I mean, I, it's, it's quite interesting uh, 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 business. Um, we're seeing a lot more interest in these businesses which are not the main banks but are uh, applying in the niches, remittances, facilitating customers to buy and sell currency. I think, you know, it, it, it just speaks to an increased investor appetite. And always when you see this kind of, uh, kind of activity, you know um, that it's a positive development because investors are prepared to sell out, get in, um, and it signals to me increased capital markets activity going forward in this space. Right, great. Thank you so much, Ali Kansaju. Uh, before we move on to the Northern African markets, where Ali Sagaru will be speaking to, i uh, like to just announce the presence of Akinson De Suleiman, the research analyst with Greenwich uh, Merchant Bank, just so we know, so, so you know that uh, we recognize your, uh, your presence on the show this morning. Thanks a great deal. We'll be coming to you shortly with your outlook on the MPC meeting uh, for today. But before then, let's get Ali Sagar to uh, weigh in on the Northern African headlines that we have here. Suez Cement uh, is to sell 51% of its stake in Hilal Cement. Alexandria Flower Mills posting some 22% PAT. Uh, Faisal Islamic Bank's business volume rises by some 7.2% to 117 billion uh, Egyptian pounds in December. Uh, Morocco inflation is also key for us here. Uh, was at 0.7% for the year 2020. Ali, uh, let's get you to speak to these developments in the northern part of uh, Africa. Ali, again. Yes, yes. Uh, all these developments are quite interesting. I think this is, uh, we can say, all this uh, new development shows a new norm in North Africa, in fact. So everything comes to normal and comes, to, we can say, to increased business. So Suez to sell 51% of Al Hilal, it's quite normal, you know. They said it to the Kuwait, we can say Kuwait financial market. So they need cash and they need to sell this, uh, we can say this part of this 51% that they do, didn't really manage it well in the past. So it's an uh, amount of cash coming into the company. So it's a good news. The market recognizes good news because there is a big increase on the, on the stock price of uh, Suez just for the last week. So we are uh, just to give you the figures. For Suez, it was roughly 7.22 uh, uh, yes, beginning of the month, and now it's pretty nine, in fact. So it's a big increase. Um, after, for the, the rest of the news, in fact, we have uh, the... Um, we have the Alexandria Floor Mills. So as you know, this company is mo mostly, we can say, specialized in all bakery, pasta, jam, sweetness, so mostly fo food commodities. So there is, a, there is also a big increase on this, uh, we can say, this type of co companies in, in North Africa. So before COVID-19, I think in the uh, month of uh, March uh, 2020 or February 2020, uh, the, the stock price was around 9.38. It, it, it decreased. Uh, during the COVID-19 uh, to, uh, to uh, 5.23, and now it's quite 14.10. So it means that uh, from March 2020 to now, the stock price has tripled. So it's a big, big increase of the, we can say, the stock price. So it's even more than, the, we can say, the stock price before for COVID. So this company is quite, we can say, it's quite consistent with its business model because the business model is quite on food commodity and food commodity in North Africa and especially in Egypt is increasing, especially food commodity produced inside the country, not the imports, but really the food commodity produced in Egypt. So it's a big, we can say, market for all these companies. 
Uh, after, I will come back to Bank of Tunisia, Bank de Tunisie. So Bank de Tunisie, we have a big profit, we can say, uh, coming, so more than uh, 300 million. Uh, the issue, this is that the operating, we can say, profit decreased in uh, Bank, of, Bank de Tunisie, but the operating charges decreased in more. So the operating profit decreased of 1% and the operating charge decreased of more than 7%. So this, we can say, profit is more related, we can say, to restructuration of the charges inside the company. So it's also one of the new norm after COVID-19. This is to make all these companies more efficient. So they are, we can say, uh, just uh, decreasing as much as possible the charges just to survive on these on, uh, this, uh, conditions, in fact. Thank you, Ali. I'd uh, just like to get a sense of uh, what Swiss Cement is doing in uh, um, Egypt. Have they finally delisted from the Egyptian stock exchange now? Not yet, no. Oh, okay. So that prob that's probably in the works because we know that uh, sometimes yes. in December last year, they, we got that approval from the board uh, to move off the uh, stock exchange. Thank you so much. Ali, yes. For your As you as you know, Egyptian administration is quite, we can say, slow in taking decisions. So it will take a little bit more time, but I think it's on the good way, in fact, to, uh, to go to go towards the delisting. Decision about money usually takes time, actually. I yes. recognize that. Okay, Akitsun Suleiman, let's quickly get your uh, outlook on the monetary policy uh, committee meeting of the central banks, uh, which starts today, tomorrow. They will, be, they will be announcing their decision. What's your outlook? So I, I think this is a very great... Um, a great point out for this year for a lot of market players um you say the market has not really been moving because um investors really need to know the direction of um, of where the market will be going today uh, for, for for this year um i believe the mp mpc will keep a hold on on on, on um on the npr and um, this being the fact that um we've seen um there were two weeks of the cbn um skew towards um growth and uh, stimulating credit to the real sector and we, we we expressed that in 2020 we saw a lot of spike um in terms of our uh, credit to the private sector and uh we believe that regardless of the fact that we are seeing inflation trickle upward um we are expecting that the mp mpc will retain this hold on npr however there's a possibility for them to actually um manage liquidity using other monetary tools which might be at their disposal which we feel they may utilize um in in this meeting or coming meetings but in this meeting i expect that um we will see some some old on the npr and uh would would, would the cbn will want to watch on how um development or how those funds that have been plugged into into um, the economy to, uh, work for the for the first quarter then subsequently we might start seeing some hockey stance from from the from the from the mpc um you agree with me that if you look at why um the the, the fulcrum on why inflation has been has been spiking in, in 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 nigeria it's not really about liquidity yeah liquidity plays its part but it's more on the supply side it's more on the cost um push so we're expecting that um liquidity uh, liquidity will not be um, a, a major, a major, a major uh, constraint to this MPC on making on hiking um, NPR. Uh, we, if, 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 if we push this into the fixed income and the equity space, you see um, a lot of a lot of uh, market players are not really taking those positions anymore because they are waiting on the outcome of this meeting. For the fixed income market, we've seen a lot of sell off in the past uh, um, three weeks in this year. Um, we, we, we've been seeing. Um, Holdings reducing and a lot of offers in the market because uh, there's the anticipation that uh, the MPC may may hike the rates, which would which would just um, sweep people off their feet. And in the equity market as well, you see uh, they believe that if there's a spike in MP, MP, NPR at any point, um, the, you see a lot of sell off and um, those those stocks that are currently at the very comfortable level will start uh, trending downwards and nobody wants to be caught in there. So there's a lot of sideways uh, movement. There's a lot of um, just holding on to what you have and see where it goes. But in the fixed income, we've been seeing a lot of sell-off. So we're expecting that if the MPC holds um, this rate today, if they hold the NPR today, um, or tomorrow rather, you see you see a lot of um, traction return back to, to the equity market. And as well, you see some buy, buy sentiment in the fixed income market. Thank you so much, Akintunde. Uh, clearly, the expectations around the CBN MPC today is mixed across analyst community. Bolson, you want to give us your final thoughts on the ceiling project? That is something that is expected to help, you know, bring some kind of revolution to the uh, maritime space in Africa. 
I think Nigeria, uh, I think Nigeria is scrambling uh, left, right, and centre right now to to get some things done. Uh, I think last week or two weeks ago, we got the news that the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria is, will try to merge the airplanes of Arik Air with that of Aero Contractors to form a new national airline for Nigeria, which will be called Nigerian Eagle. I think Nigeria is trying to position itself for the new AFCFTA, trying to see how Ethiopia and others are, are working. Um, then this ceiling project is to try and take four vessels and form a new national airline. It's a whole lot of very sordid history of Nigeria when it comes to the shipping. We don't have a national carrier on the ocean. We don't have in the air as well. And you can't be a country such as Nigeria strategic without having either a national airline or an ocean liner. So we're paying so much money across the board to move our vessels, move oil, our exports, our producers, exporters are just hiring vessels left, right, and center. So I think with the whole issue that even Ghana has what it takes to ship goods to Nigeria by sea, it's one news, I guess that is getting Nigeria to wake up right now that look, you can actually get a national carrier back on. You know, we tried NNSL sank in the 80s or early 90s. Then we tried the national unity line. That also didn't work. So it looks like this is about the third attempt. Then we tried to set up a maritime bank. Sometime many years ago, about 20 years ago, it never really worked. So we hope this time that the government will be able to get a national carrier. If we don't get a national airline, let's get something on the sea. You cannot do this business in today's world without having an ocean-going vessel of your own. It's just a total no-no. You are exporting agriculture, you export products, you're exporting petroleum products and everything, crude oil. You have no single vessel on the ocean. It's a total no. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you, you gentlemen, for all of your analysis on the show this morning. They're highly, highly appreciated. Ali Sagar, been a while we had you, but it's wonderful to have you today. Ali Sagar is a professional services um, expert with Sagar and Associates in Dubai. Thank you for, your, uh, for joining us on the show this morning. Ali Kansachu, founder at Reach Frontiers Management in Nairobi. Thanks for your analysis on the show. Uh, Onye Kai Joma of Vertical Capital Management. We appreciate your presence. Hakinson De Suleiman from Greenwich Merchant Banks. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Bosun Amalfi, Executive Editor at Frontier Africa Reports. I appreciate your time. I'm Temple Ashadu. This has been Frontier Opening Bell for today. Do have yourself a wonderful Monday. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.